Hi friends, how are you? Welcome back to my channel for a video that I'm really excited about because it's food. <laughs> One of my favorite things. Today I'm going to be showing you what an average grocery haul looks like for me. Lately with staying at home and eating at home, we've been spending between $150 to $200 a week on groceries, eating every meal except for usually one meal out of the week at home. We'll, we'll order in on a Friday night oftentimes, but I know a lot of people might be interested in this because I do have a background in nutrition. I am not a dietitian. I always like to start off with that little clarification in the beginning. Dietitians are the people that you should trust the most within this field. Technically, anybody can call themselves a nutritionist. There is no specific schooling that you need to have to call yourself a nutritionist. However, I do have my bachelor's degree in nutrition. So I love healthy food and healthy eating. And I'm going to be showing you everything that I ordered this week for my groceries. There's a couple healthy snacks, not so healthy things and just an honest variety. I got quite a few extra snacks this week because there was a chance I was going to have to do a road trip to Utah to drop off inventory for Jancy the Label. That's no longer happening. But just to be prepared, I did buy a few non-perishable snacks of sorts. So I do have more this week than normal, but let's get into it. One of my favorite non-perishable snacks is hippies. They're kind of like puffed Cheetos. They're so good, but they're made primarily out of chickpea flour and rice flour. I actually first tried to order Lesser Evil, which are these like egg puffs. They're made out of egg whites, which are my favorite, favorite snack. Sprouts was out of it this week though. So this was my second choice. I love hippies. There's a lot of protein, a lot of fiber and um, certified gluten-free. I do have celiac disease. So one of my favorite healthy snacks are these little bags of sugar snap peas. I love them because they come pre-washed. They're just super easy and they last quite a long time. This lasts for a couple weeks, according to the date that I have to eat this by. I love to dip these into hummus. I love to dip these into salsa, which I know sounds weird. And lately Brooke has gotten me a little bit hooked on ranch. I haven't ever dipped these in ranch, but I do I do plan to try that this week and see what I think. I've never had veggies in ranch before, which I know is a very common thing, but I would say hummus and salsa are the things that I dip this into the most. And it's just a great way to get in some extra greens and some extra fiber and micronutrients without really having to put in any prep because just as easy as opening a bag of chips is opening a bag of these. My favorite, speaking of chips, I got these in hopes of making tortilla soup here in the next few days, but I love Siete. Siete has so many different things. I actually got some of their tortillas this week as well, but they have grain-free chips that are so delicious. The lime flavor is the best. They're made out of cassava flour. Numerically, carbohydrate per carbohydrate, calorie per calorie. They're not that different from normal chips, but I do really like the taste and texture of them, and corn kind of upsets my stomach. It makes me feel bloated. These make me feel less bloated, so I appreciate that and the lime flavor is just delicious. Next, okay, this is something that we order quite frequently, but our normal brand wasn't in stock, so we're trying a new brand, but I got gluten-free chicky nuggies. <laughs> this is Applegate. We normally get the Sprouts brand. They actually have a buffalo flavor that's so good. Brooke even is obsessed with them. He'll have them every single day for lunch. They're just really, really easy, but I've recently come to the conclusion that though they're not the healthiest thing, since they're baked instead of fried, they're not the worst. It's essentially just chicken meat covered in rice starch. So it's like having chicken and rice, except for the rice is covering the chicken, you know? And then you're baking it. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm perfect. And it's also not as bad as I initially assumed. Definitely better than getting it out at a fast food restaurant where they throw it in a fryer. <laughs> Next is arugula. I'm obsessed with arugula. I go through a box of this a week. Oftentimes I'll make veggie patties and put them on top, tofu put them on top, I'll scramble it in with some eggs. I'll, I'll turn my chicken into a salad. Sometimes I'll even turn chicken nuggets into a salad with this. So <laughs> I'm obsessed and I actually don't like to buy dressing. What I do is a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and lemon, and it's t so good. I love like the peppery zestiness of arugula. Nothing compares in my opinion. It's, it's the best green. These are for Brooke. He loves these little gummy watermelon rings from Sprouts, but I did get something similar for myself. I have talked about these so many times, and if you know me, you know I am obsessed with Smart Sweets. I beg them to sponsor me all the time, and they haven't, but um, Essentially, this is peach gummy rings, but the very first ingredient is prebiotic soluble fiber from tapioca. So within this bag, there's 80 
calories. Technically there are 33 grams of carbohydrates, but there is 28 grams of fiber. That is as much fiber as you need in a day. So that brings the net carbs to mm, five grams of net carbs. To find net carbs, you subtract fiber from carbohydrates. And there's only three grams of sugar because this is primarily sweetened with stevia, stevia, however you wanna say it, potato, potato. So I love this. Certified gluten-free, non-GMO. Um, a lot of their sweets are vegan. Some of the flavors absolutely suck. Like I would not recommend the Sour Buddies. The Swedish Fish are okay, but honestly, these are the only ones that I really, really love. And they're so, so good. I'm a huge fan of fiber. You know that about me. I think fiber is the solution to everything. <laughs> Continuing on the snacks. These are my favorite crackers. I love Simple Mills almond flour crackers. They have a ton of different really good flavors. I like their tomato basil as well, but the ingredients are so simple. There's a nut and seed blend, so almond, sunflower seed, and flaxseed. Tapioca starch, cassava flour, sunflower oil, rosemary, sea salt, onion, garlic, pepper, and rosemary extract for freshness. So they use rosemary extract as a natural preservative instead of any of the unnatural preservatives, which I really admire. So it's primarily based out of almond flour and some cassava flour. Sorry, I had to take a break to do an inventory exchange for Chancy the Label and now I'm out of breath from running up and down my stairs carrying boxes of Crunix. <laughs> Where I left off, was these. This is one of my favorite snacks. My only complaint is they're so expensive. So expensive. But I've been eating these since high school. I lived in Texas growing up and this was like the first healthy snack H-E-B carried. <laughs> so I was so excited. I'm sure all of you that haven't been to Texas don't even know what H-E-B is, but it's one of the best grocery stores in the US and it's only in Texas. These are $5, which is my only issue, but they are kale chips made out of mostly kale, sunflower seeds, and tahini. And then there's different flavorings. So I love the Cool Ranch and I bought these in case I needed non-perishable snacks this week. It's more of like a special treat kind of a Occasion. I have been obsessed with this lately. I've been trying to buy some frozen protein to make our grocery hauls last a little bit longer. And this has been one of my favorite easy frozen meals. This is from Sprouts. Obviously all this is from Sprouts, but this is butter herb salmon. It's one of the few like pre kind of marinated fishes that are safely gluten-free that Sprouts has, but I love salmon. And it has this almost like little pad of herb butter on top. So we use our Tovala oven. I pop them in there and I just click salmon and Lo and behold, like 10 minutes later, it's ready and it has like the perfect golden brown from the butter that kind of just like oozes down the side. The herbs, oh, it's so good. And I'll just roast some veggies on the side and call it a meal. So it takes no prep, super healthy, delicious. If you eat a little bit of dairy, I mean, there is a little bit of real butter in there, but one other splurge. I love these. Siete almond flour tortillas, the best. One of my favorite like splurge, financially breakfasts is breakfast tacos. Yet another Texas thing <laughs> where I use these as the tortillas and then I'll just scramble some eggs with some avocado and some salsa on top and it's so good. It's the best. It's a very, very happy breakfast. I love these. Also really good with some vegan cheese for quesadillas. This is something new that I'm excited to try, but this is green pea rotini. This has 11 grams of protein per serving and five grams of fiber, certified gluten-free. I love edamame pasta. Sprouts was out of that. That's one of my favorite things to get because it has so much protein and fiber and it's so clean and just, it's amazing. So I'm gonna try this and see if I like it. Literally the only ingredient in here is green pea flour. It's the only ingredient, there's one ingredient. That's it. I love to make noodles with olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and a ton of nutritional yeast. Like that's it. That's what I normally do with my edamame noodles. I'll have that by itself as a meal or I'll have it alongside a couple other things to kind of just like supplement a meal and make it a little more hearty. So we'll see if I like them, but nutritionally it looks great. It looks too good to be true. I got some chicken this week. I'm gonna do some chicken and veggies. Okay, here's, here's, here's a kind of funny little trick I do to myself. I love these dark chocolate peanut butter kind bars as dessert. They taste like a chocolate chip cookie. They're a lot cheaper and cleaner than normal gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. I mean, the first ingredients are oats, cane sugar, semi-sweet chocolate. So, I mean, it is more of a dessert. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as like a breakfast, but as far as gluten-free desserts go, this is up there for um, cost-effective and like, at least that's whole ingredients. Always love eggs for breakfast. I used to be allergic to eggs actually. And as soon as I took a couple more blood tests and confirmed I had grown out of the allergy, I have gone crazy and I eat so many eggs 
and I love it. Now we're getting into the produce. I have cilantro. This I buy every single week, no matter what. It makes every dish look beautiful. I put it on top of my eggs in the morning. I put it on top of avo toast. If I do just like a rice and chicken dish, just putting a couple sprigs of cilantro on top takes it from like bland and ugly to looking like a professional, beautiful dish. It's great for plating. It's great for flavor. I just always have cilantro on hand. My veggies this week, I got asparagus. I got zucchini and I got mushroom. I love all these because they don't make me feel bloated. That's like the main deciding factor for me. I don't often eat broccoli and cauliflower and things like that, though they are super healthy. They're just, they're cruciferous vegetables. So they have a lot of rough fiber in it and they just will make you more bloated. So oftentimes I go for things that are a little bit easier, like zucchini is really easy on my stomach and doesn't make me feel bloated at all. And it's still a great healthy vegetable. I got avocados. I just put avocados on everything if I'm feeling hungry. Any dish, breakfast, lunch, dinner, throw an avocado on top and it's much more filling. This is the one dairy that I frequently consume and it is Parmesan. Parmesan is lower in lactose than a lot of other cheeses. So a longer a cheese is aged or more of like a hard cheese like Parmesan, the lactose actually like ages out. So this has a lower amount of lactose than mozzarella or softer cheeses. So I can have about a tablespoon of this within my eggs in the morning and feel totally fine. Technically I am lactose intolerant, but this doesn't phase me. So I love Parmesan and it makes scrambles so yummy. My favorite snack, pickles. My nickname is Mickle Pickle and Moco. Those are my two nicknames. I know Moco means booger in Spanish. That's why it is my nickname. Um, <laughs> this is the best brand. This is Grillos or is it Grillos? G-R-I-L-L-O-S. I don't know if it's a Spanish pronunciation, but this is a very garlicky and very dill forward pickle brand. It's so good, so fresh, so crisp. This is my first time getting the spear I usually get the pickle chips, but they were sold out of that. So same thing in sphere form, and I'm very excited for them. The last couple things, LaCroix. We drink so much sparkling water. I'm drinking one now. I consider myself pretty lucky to never really have had like a thing for soda. I know a ton of my friends really struggle with cutting out sugar in their diet and oftentimes it comes from drinking soda and a lot of them i've gotten them hooked on sparkling water instead and they don't even miss soda anymore it has the same like satisfying sparkling quench i i seriously drink like four to five sparkling waters a day it's bad we love this brand from Vons, I believe, because you can get a 12 pack for $2.99, I think it is. LaCroix is a bit more expensive, so whenever we have to go to Vons for something else, I'll, I'll stock up on these, but for our normal groceries, I'll buy LaCroix because Sprouts doesn't have this nice cheap brand. We are getting to the last few items. Next is a coffee creamer. I actually just discovered this one a couple weeks ago, but I like it. It's water, coconut cream, almond is the main makeup of this unsweetened. I prefer unsweetened. I have gone through phases where I really like sweetened coffee creamer and I notice as soon as I switch, I dislike the unsweetened for like two days, but then I get completely used to it and it cuts down the amount of added sugar in my day-to-day -day significantly. And I think it's good to not start my morning off with added sugar because then I find myself craving it more throughout the day. So I really like this. It's unsweetened. It's good. You can get a little chunky. You got to shake it pretty well. And sometimes I'll use my little milk frother to get this nice and blended. This is not healthy at all, but I did get some ranch for said veggies and Brooke really wanted some for his cheeky nuggies. <laughs> so this is our first time actually ever buying ranch. We'll usually ask for it like at restaurants for fries or whatever. I hope this doesn't become a habit because this is definitely not very healthy at all. But you know, like I said, I'm showing you my groceries. And last but not least, this is not normally what we get, but I got some unsweetened almond milk. They were out of Oatly, and I am so sad because Oatly is probably our most essential grocery thing of all. We probably go through three cartons of Oatly a week, at least. We use it for smoothies, cereal, my matcha. I truly believe that is the key to a good matcha latte is good oat milk, and Oatly, in my opinion, is the only tasty, oat milk, but they were out. So unsweetened almond breeze it is. I'm not particularly excited about it. I think this is just okay. Doesn't taste great. 
compared to Oatly. Oatly's so much better. That is my grocery haul. That's what we're eating this week. And that's what I usually buy when I buy my groceries from Sprouts. I hope this was fun for you. I love talking about food. I love talking about nutrition. Some of my favorite topics. I love y'all with my absolute whole heart. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye.